Hey everybody, Andy from Tennis Euphoria bringing you my review of the Dunlop FX500 Tour, the 98 square inch version. Dunlop I think are poised to do quite well with this racket. It's um, an interesting spec with some strong endorsed players now uh, endorsing the FX line. The previous iteration of this racket was a bit of an unsung hero. And I think this uh, 98 square inch version is uh, quite appealing to a lot of people potentially now, so we'll probably do quite well. So I was excited to hit it. The technology is uh, largely the same. We've just got a much um, uh, actually softer feel with only four points um, being lighter on the RA. Sadly, my initial demo racket was um, massively uh, under spec and I actually found that the um, sort of huge variance next to what it should be on paper did affect my view on it in early stages of the play test now i could have taken the op um, the opinion of just customizing it which is something that i do do uh, but i think that a lot of people will be wanting to make sure that they're getting as close to um, spec as as they can and probably won't want to play around with lead and customize and take off grommets um, so I elected to go to a retailer they know quite well and try to find one on spec that was interesting because the static weights on them did vary a lot in the shop but um, they let me buy one which was um, on static weight and close to swing weight so I was getting there, um, I strung it up with Head Links Tour, again a heavy string that I thought would further help that issue, and then I had something at a 311 swing weight strung, which at least was a little bit more playable. And at that point felt that I could start uh, playing with the racket as it's intended to be, and give it some honest thoughts. So the FX uh, Tour is the 98 square inch version of the FX line, which is Dunlop's power line. You often see uh, power rackets with some sort of blue coloring. Um, the difference between this and the other is, um, I think, fairly minimal, actually. It would be quite an easy transition for anyone who has been playing with the previous. But I think that the feel um, is improved if you uh, prefer, um, obviously, softer feels. Now the previous was an unsung hero because it actually um, offered um, all the power that you'd get from a lot of um, your 100 square inch power rackets and then just subtly more control and uh, by coincidence I had two people who worked with me who were making changes from their beloved 2012 pure drives and we went through a process of testing a number of new rackets based on um, hitting with them and looking at some of their movement patterns um, and we decided that for them to upgrade they wanted to uh, remain with power but we're ultimately looking for a little bit more control and the skill in their game and their footwork and bodywork meant that they um, were likely to hit the sweet spot uh, more often than not. So actually that Dunlop uh, previous iteration won the day against loads of other rackets and both of those players adopted that racket and have been really enjoying it. Uh, also, and I think this was a factor, uh, the price point on the previous iteration was tactically cheaper than some of the um, arguable bigger brands and that worked really well for them. They went and bought two, uh, they might have bought one previously. Um, Dunlop here seem to have pushed their prices up and they are um, clearly getting a bit more confident maybe around those endorsements. So then of course as a result you have higher expectations. So how was I finding the racket to play? Well, it probably does have um, a few different camps of player who could look at this. So it isn't as powerful as a lot of the um, 100 square inch tweener rackets. That's something you should note. And the other thing that it isn't is um, as spin friendly as other rackets that have quite similar specs. So if you were to compare this right off the bat to the Babylon Pure Aero VS, and I suspect the Pure Aero 98, which I'm going to review soon, then you have much less spin. If you were to compare it to the Head Extreme Tour, um, then again, much less spin and a lower launch angle. That's probably come across with some of the hitting that you've seen. As you noticed, I've missed my targets a couple of times and hit the net a couple of times because I've been used to a little bit more launch angle and rotation and spin on the ball. 
However, uh, control is really good and is certainly um, better um, in, in terms of directional accuracy and managing your length once you're dialed in than a 100 square inch racket would be. So if you are looking to transition away from a 100 square inch power racket, then this could be a really good option for you. Similarly, if you're quite a flat hitter who's looking for a bit more power from your racket and maybe you're coming from a control orientated racket, then again, this could be a really good option for you. I also think what's quite interesting is that if you're someone who's playing with a low RA control racket at the moment, which is all about feel, control, precision, um, maybe you're aging a little or you think you could benefit from more power, uh, then this again could be a really good option to have a look at because you do have quite a controlled setup with that 98 square inch head, relatively tight 16 by 19 pattern. Um, and now that the RA is at 66, um, it wouldn't feel like you're moving to something that is ridiculously crisp. Um, it's almost like sort of pro staff um, crisp, um, although I would say that pro staffs would give you more spin. Um, I do think this would be a really good platform racket and I think that it would benefit from more weight, from more plow through. Um, and I do think that you've got to be careful around that quality control. Um, the other thing that I noticed was I really just didn't like the grip. It just didn't feel particularly um, high end or expensive, particularly if you were to compare it to um, the head hydrosaur grip, for example. So, so I think Dunlop are well on their way with this uh, racket. I think it will be quite popular. It will be supported by those endorsements and for the right profile of player, this could be a really good option. Uh, the advice though that I would give you if you are looking at it is just to be a bit mindful of that quality control. Um, I would probably go to a retailer where you can have a look at a few, um, uh, weigh the racket, try and get the balance um, looked at too and try and get something um, as close to spec as possible. Um, and if you're buying a couple then you probably want to take them somewhere to get matched um, or use a matching service to make sure they're on spec and match just to mitigate that risk a little. Um, so you know it's okay but a couple of things to be wary of um, and I think that it'll be really interesting to compare this to um, some competitors I mean it compares I suppose quite comparably to the uh, Technofiber 300 um, RS um, however the uh, RS gives you a little bit more um, launch and spin um, I would say that you should look at the Eager Technofiber Eager if you're in the market for this and then of course the big competition for this is just hit the market the Babolat um, Pure Drive 98 which I will be reviewing uh, next on the channel hope this was helpful and if you want to see um, some up and coming um, really good racket reviews Yonex V-Core line Babolat Pure Drive 98 as I just said and the Babolat Pure Aero 98 then subscribe to the channel because they'll all be with you over the next few weeks thanks for watching and see you in the next one